Peace, peace, family. Peace, 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 peace. We back with another episode of the Track Wolf Godcast. Ooh. I'm your boy Track Beats. Ooh. We got my motherfucking brother Chino Blizzy in the no. building with us as always. You know what I'm saying? Y'all make sure y'all tap in the Vinegar Hill. You know what I'm saying? They got a lot of dope merch content and a crazy history behind them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Historical. Definitely tap in. You know what I'm saying? But um, on that note, we about to go ahead and jump right into this subject of the day before I get the fuck out Wednesday. Mm. <laughs> you feel me? So uh, mm. today we're going to be discussing for our first subject is trauma bonding. Mm. Trauma bonding. Bonding through trauma. Gotcha. So first we have to give you the breakdown of trauma, traumatic you know what I'm saying? And then we'll go over to bonding. And then we're going to put them all together. Nice, nice. Nice breakdown. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, it's, as far as for me, I'll just give my first perspective first on it since I'm already rambling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, nigga. I know, I'm, like, I'm getting there. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> this nigga be so smooth with the insults. <laughs> the smoothest. Here you go, go ahead. I'm yeah. trying to get into the subject. <laughs> is what happened. Trigger. I know. That's trauma. That's the idea of trauma. Hey, that's, a, that's a good way to break trauma. it. Exactly. Yeah. Trauma. You know what I'm saying? When you go through something traumatic in your life or you have something traumatic a uh, traumatic experience happened. I know I keep using that word to make it sound like that's defining it. But for an example would be like, um, say when you was little or something and your parents left out and you, something bad happened to you while you was home. That's a traumatic situation, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna leave like a, a negative response emotion to it almost, you know what I'm saying? So then you're gonna be trying to figure out your way to either not experience that emotion or to stay away from it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. So how would you tap on, you know, add on to that uh, slight well, trauma, perspective of it? If I were to, to be trying to put it in the most broadest sense that I could, trauma is a situation or an instance that happens that affects your mind dramatically, your mind, your emotion, or your body dramatically. Yes. Um, and what he was talking about is the lasting effects, like maybe from this situation or maybe from this object that may have fell on you, whatever happened, it causes a negative or repetitive response that you feel like whenever the situation happened, it's based on this experience that I had. Like yeah. the same type of responses and reactions are gonna happen. So for a better example too, for us adults more recent, you know, it's like being in a relationship, you know what I'm saying? Like, say you're in a relationship, it's been great the first six months, year, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Whatever your time span is, doesn't fucking matter. You know what I'm saying now? Now, say y'all at your brinks and y'all wasn't picking up the little rocks as y'all was going. Now they done accumulated. And now when you talk to people outside of your person or your partner, you know, it's more toxicity in the conversations that you're spewing about your person. You know what I'm saying? It's more negative. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you're not really venting because I feel like venting is kind of like a, a transition or a transfer, not really just to spill out, you know what I'm saying? In my perspective. So it's like if I go to bro over some shit that I got going on with a female or something, I keep going to him about it, you know what I'm saying? And then he's bringing his stuff over to the table as well, you know what I'm saying? And, and we kind of forming a relationship based around that you know what i'm saying and that will go into the bonding part you know what i'm saying yes. everybody most people know the definition of bonding togetherness you know what i'm saying and kind of putting something together so yes. i bring my trauma to the table with my toxic relationship and you know unhealthy perspectives to the table that i keep communicating with my friend or partner or person about you know what i'm saying and then they bring theirs to the table so that's all we basically talking about is I'm talking about my bullshit, he talking about his bullshit, we ain't talking about no elevation. Yeah. And we grew a bond through that. That's called trauma bonding. And and the thing about it is, to you, you may be finding solutions. Um, it may make you feel good. Um 
whatever it does for you, it makes it it may make it harder to actually see that you're you're bonding over negative issues and your common ground is negative issues. Yeah. So that's what your relationship is based off of negativity. And I know uh, I'll say for me, even though I know for a lot of us, but for me and my past experience before I start raising my vibration, like. I know I was a, a, a victim to that, you know what I'm saying, as well, or like a, a co-conspirator, whatever word you want to fucking use, you know what I'm saying, I'm not no victim, but I, I was a part of that trend as well, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like I would be in the process of breaking up with somebody, but in the process of meeting someone new, I'm not literally just beating the person down that I was with, but the energy that I'm putting out is, is negative about them, you know what I'm saying, like I'm only discussing the bad shit, you know what I'm saying, I'm not talking about any of the things that kept me in the relationship or around that person, you know what I'm saying? That's that's the only thing that I'm indulging in. And a lot of people call it baggage. Like if you were somebody or you around somebody who and you're trying to get into a, a relationship with them that does not trauma bond, they may feel like, man, you come with a lot of baggage. You know what I mean? Like you come with a lot of trauma. Whatever word you want to use, yeah. like yeah, it's your personal situations, and also, man, throughout trauma bonding, man, I've also mm -hmm. learned that you can transition transition the relationship if you would like, but it is difficult. It is once you've built that base, because it's built on an unhealthy base. You know what I'm saying? So, for one, usually when it's opposite sexes, they talking about this boyfriend while they with this nigga, this nigga talking about this girl while he with this girl, you know what I'm saying? And it's usually just that negative communication and then you got sex in the middle. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes. So it's like, ah, this is my happy space in the pussy. But, uh, you know, I got this shit over here that I'm just spewing as soon as I get done doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Or, eat, or it just blank nothing, you know what I'm saying? So, and vice versa, you got the same thing with the females to do the same thing, you know what I'm saying? So it's having a healthy base starting off the relationship any relationship you know and and i just like to speak it on as far as overall because it's hard to put it on one ship you know what i'm saying just far as like only the opposite sex because you know, a lot of niggas become friends off of trauma bonding you know yeah. what i'm saying just because i went to prison and you went to prison don't mean that i'm about to trauma bond with you nigga like i don't live in that field you know what i'm saying that's something i experienced and i learned and i live but <clears throat> I, I, that's not the energy that I continue to put out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Even something as simple as where you grew up at. If you grew up in a bad neighborhood or a lower income neighborhood where it wasn't much opportunity or resources, you can bond over that. So, what I realize is, is we're just talking about it more. Trauma bonding is almost like for some people, they're really just trying to be relatable. Some people are really toxic. But some people really try to find ways to be relatable. We all do that. Just that happens to be their way. So then you just got to figure out another method to be more relatable in your conversations. Yeah. Because, I mean, there was a lot of times I was trauma bonding. I'm, I'm actually be completely transparent. I probably just stopped trauma bonding a couple months ago. You know what I mean? Consciously. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because I just. How you know, did you become aware of that? Like, what was it? I grew up in so much darkness, man, and I was just listening to, you know, I listen to stuff on TikTok, YouTube, I, I yeah. learned from everywhere. I was listening to something, and someone was talking, and they was just like, man, the relationship you have with this person is all based on your trauma, and that's not healthy. And I thought about it, and I just started relating that information to my personal things, and I was just like, damn, you know, like, even though I feel like I'm healing, and I may be helping this person heal, or this person heal, or this person heal, like it's all based on our negative <clears throat> background. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I had to look at, I think what happened with me was when I went to prison, I was able to look at it. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I don't use it for trauma. That's like my learning point. You know what I'm saying? Where learning, that was once in my life where I realized learning was a choice that I chose to do. You know what I'm saying? I just went through all these years of fucking school where it was forced and I didn't even want to fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I was forced to sit down and some shit I got caught doing and I'm saying I would take it back or whatever, but it's like, <clears throat> I was forced to sit down, but I wasn't forced to learn. And that was a big difference for me. You know what I'm saying? Just So then, 
not being forced to learn and it being a choice, it was easier for me to, to recognize these different relationships that I wanted to have with some of my bros lot, you know what I'm saying? Like Did you make a conscious transition <clears throat> from trauma bonding or did is is it something that just developed naturally? I think I probably accumulated probably like I would say thirty percent of relation my relationships throughout my life are trauma bond. Most of them I was pretty aware. Just because I was moving around a lot, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like that would be the only thing I had to discuss. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I had my life experiences was just set up for me that it wasn't that much. It, for me, it would be the whole 30% was basically in opposite sex relationships. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with females. That's when the bulk of mine was in there. But as far as like my homeboys, I grew up around brothers and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I had that. And then being able to sit down in prison, that's when it made me become more on a different level more aware of the, the people I allowed, the males I allowed around me, close to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. By for, I know some of the ways by force that can help me realize <clears throat> that, but what, what are some of the ways that you just, some of the things and like ways that you notice to like, I want to say read people, but pretty much like feel or see someone's character, you know what I mean? Yeah, that just, uh, I, for me, I really think it had a lot to do with just between movies growing up and knowing that that shit isn't real. Because at the time, I didn't know it was real to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? I just thought the movies was just all fake people, just all acting. So, And then with my life experiences, they just kind of went hand in hand, just being able to kind of see people for more than just the actions, you know what I'm saying? So, between moving around a lot, at a young age, I had some friends that'd be cool one minute and then shitty the next minute, and then moving around from different places, I had friends that'd be cool the whole time. They wouldn't be in them weird spaces and shitty moves just out the blue. I didn't know what it was or what it, you know, what it could have been, but, but uh, for me, my life experiences, you know what I'm saying, like, just, being in tune, I moved around a lot, I'm a big bro, so I, I have to pay attention, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, I, I became a, a big brother, me and my brother, I, he was, was born when I was 13, you know, we were <clears> 12, 12 years apart, so I pretty much was in charge. And even our relationships with our brothers, our siblings, it's still kind of all forced relationships because we're in the house, we still yeah. not really able to make choices I mean, we are, we just aren't aware of like choices. We wasn't taught. We're at a place now to where we're being a, becoming more aware and we're teaching this shit on down the line. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you don't agree with it or don't like it, you still have a choice. Yeah, man. And like, speaking of that choice, man, for some people who may be realizing that they do trauma bond and they need to have some like signposts on how to transition that, like, for me, it was realizing that I was tribal bonding and switching the topics of conversation, not looking for the same responses yeah. and not trying to elicit or pull out the same responses from that person. Because <clears throat> it did, when I was transitioning, feel like I was lacking or a relationship didn't really have much substance anymore because I was so yeah. used to doing things one way. Yeah, you lose it. And that's what also happens where they say like, relationships lose their spark after like three months to six months to a year it's because it was the blueprint of it was was unhealthy yeah. you know what I'm saying if you already coming in with a healthy blueprint that's not even going to be part of the stereotype but you already feeding into the stereotype by believing that you know what I'm saying if, if I'm vibrating at my highest frequency and I know I'm not trauma bonding with the next person you know what I'm saying then the female that I meet, if I'm going to build something with, is going to be on that same frequency, if not higher, you know what I'm saying? So then I wouldn't be thinking, oh, in six months, that this is going to get tricky, you know what I'm saying? I already have a realistic concept, or oh, plan on being with somebody the rest of my life, you know what I'm saying? Like, so what is yeah. six months to my life? No, that's interesting, man, <laughs> because my thing used to be, I, I, I until we're together for six months i'm not even taking you seriously like that so 
that used to be my thing because it's like I feel like six to nine months you will more than likely see the average person's true character at least peek through. You gotta give it some time, yeah. Everybody be such a rush, and that's what comes with trauma bonding. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you trying to force something because you feel a certain way. Like, it's been a lot of times I ain't feel like going to school, but I had to take my ass to school. <laughs> a lot of times I ain't feel like going to work, but I yeah. took my ass to work. People don't feel like brushing their teeth or washing their ass. Obviously. So, yeah. <laughs> it's maintenance. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it is. It is. So you just got to make that shit part of your process. You know what I'm saying? And then just, like bro said, you got to shift the conversation. You know what I'm saying? Shift the thoughts. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like you about to talk about this nigga, you know what I'm saying? Think of, okay, instead of him, myself. And then figure out what you can say about yourself. You know what I'm saying? And that'll kind of help you adjust that process. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like you about to talk shit about her, think about yourself. We all got enough shit going on with our own damn self. You know what I'm saying? That you got something you could be working on. I promise you. We all do. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, even, like you said, like, transitioning from other relationships, I used to... I used to want to be number one to everybody when I felt like it, you know what I mean? I used to want my choice when I wanted it, but at the same time, it got to a point where I was just like, I valued myself more and I wanted the person that I was with to be better than the last person that pissed me off or did me wrong. So rather than telling them everything they did, I would look for the things that I would have rather had yeah. in the last person. And what you saying, then, <laughs> it comes back to like, it's not a whole lot of discussion on like attractive men and how they are raised, you know, and, and, and the things that they have to experience and go through because then they also do meet the stereotypes of a handsome man out here, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to attract a lot of the good, bad, and ugly, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's a process for us going through all that shit too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. For us to be having attention from females since we were little, little, we're grown ass men now, you know what I'm saying? We had to cipher through that shit and figure out how to not feed into all that attention all the damn time, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. some people aren't blessed with that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying that shit to be ignorant or arrogant, but everybody is on a different scale. You got some niggas that's a nine or a ten, you got some that's two or three, you know what I'm saying? Like. We're, I'm, we're giving you experiences from niggas that's above the six, seven range, you know what I'm saying? Like, indeed. <laughs> yeah. And this is the thing, too, man. Like, a lot of people, when people say, yo, like, com um, um, it's about confidence, it's about confidence, you know, that's self awareness, you know what I mean? That's what I, well, that's what I take that to be. Because I already know my number, I know what I look like. I look like a, a Simpsons character. I understand, like, people say that. I look yeah. at myself in the mirror, I'm like, damn, boy, you... But I'm attracted... Me, I look like a creative player. <laughs> you do. <know? laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> we understand. You look like everybody. Every time I go somewhere, yeah, you look like my people, so are you such and such? <laughs> but there, there's this thing where when you have self-awareness and you, and you have self-value, the outside appearance can change with the value of a person's character, their morals, and their principles. You know what I mean? So somebody might look at me like a seven, but I'm going to make them feel like I'm a nine. Yeah, just by who I am, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and we just say six, seven, being generous. We being generous, we each other, you know what I mean? Just being generous, but I say that, <laughs> to say that we also went through trauma bonding ourselves as well. You know what I'm saying? They don't. It ain't just that you got niggas who twos or threes, or females that's twos or threes, and they just too ugly, so they just keep trauma bonding. Yeah, we got shit we don't went through, and, and you know, in life growing up too as well. You know what I'm saying? So we had to get to a place that where we was more understanding of ourselves and the attention we were giving and receiving. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? So then once you start narrowing things down, then you can start figuring, okay, these ones were trauma bonded. Okay, these ones was organic. Okay, like, then you can start organizing your pals. You get a pack of Skittles, some kids, I see them, they pour the whole pack out and they put Green's over here, the yellow's over here, you know what I'm saying, the red's over here. That's what you gotta do with your shit. Yeah, man. And everyone's accountable, men and women, but to be blunt, honest, men 
we're more so accountable. We have the logic, we have the wherewithal um, to see this quicker. You know what I mean? And that's just generally the fact of the matter. So like, even me as a man, like it's times where I, I know the cycle's over. I know the other person don't see it, but I gotta go to them and I gotta be like, the cycle's done. I like to start another cycle. Would you like to? I do it more consciously now, cause I'm like, so that's how you in your trauma bond situations. A lot of times, like, yeah, man. Like consciously, like I'm just I walk up to you, like yo, when I met you, I wanted to fuck you. It developed into something different. That was the base energy that is played out. Would you like to start something different? You know what I mean? Yeah. And people are receptive to that most of the time. Believe it or not, you know what I mean. Mine's is usually a gradually fade out. That's how mine used to be. Yeah. It's like a gradually fade out. It's like some people realize when they when they aren't allowed to trauma bond with you and when you aren't giving that energy back, it, it the communication minimizes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like basically like game over, you know what I'm saying? Like you ain't putting no more tokens in the game. I will say this. I once I experienced doing that for the first time, my relationships went like that afterwards. Now that we talking about this, I'm pretty sure back a long, long years and years ago, I've had some females that removed me as well. You know what I'm saying? You, so Your mind going back, you can see in all them pictures. Yeah, you're like, oh, okay. because I yeah. also self-reflect too, so I don't, I'm not just going to put myself on one side wholly of the spectrum. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I always haven't been this self-aware. I've been self-aware, but just not this self-aware, so it's like, yeah, I can see where I got removed years, years ago, probably from some situations just because of the trauma bonding, you know what I'm saying? But also, once I got to a better place, I could see that I wasn't going to enter no trauma bonding situations, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't say like, oh, I'm about to leave this person and then come to you. No, first you got to you know, get you organized because you still scramble from this one. You know what I'm saying? That's jumping straight over to the trauma bond. When I came home from prison, I, I wasn't even realizing that was the word, but I literally shut about two, three off, particularly for those kind of similar situations. I, 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 got, a, I got a question, a perspective question. If, let's say I have trauma, and then I meet somebody and they don't have trauma, but they are attempting to help me, do you consider that a trauma bond? No, because it's work it through a solution or work it to a solution, Okay, I could say. You know what I'm saying? Just like you said earlier, two people trauma bonded, but that's how they met, but then they working their self through it. You can get through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, there's plenty of people that hit quicksand and didn't die. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, patience and persistence. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, nah, without question. Resilience, all yeah, of it. Yeah, the same shit. yeah. If you growing through the process, definitely push and grow with that person. You know what I'm saying? Because they trying to pull themselves out and they're asking and showing that they want some help. And that's what we got to stop doing is trying to look at that shit as weak or make fun of it. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah, take advantage yeah. of it. Yeah. Just fucking help. You know what I'm saying? As long as they putting in the work too to, to pull themselves out. You know what I'm saying? If they going give you some some negative feed or some shit like that just make sure it's compensated with something forward and or something positive behind it you know what i'm saying but if yeah. it's not then you can put that shit on the other scale and then just let it add up and then see you know what i'm saying if they really putting in the work or not yeah man yeah man i'm i'm and I, i'm gonna say man once you get past trauma bonding it's kind of like you step into a i want to say a new world but it's like a new mindset and yeah. it is like a new world. You know what I mean? It is. We live in one world, but it's multiple worlds. This is multiple universes. Like, we all have a universe. His universe is different than my universe. But we have a joint universe as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. hey, you, you got to keep an open perspective. Like, even though I'm not in the churches, I don't sit there and put my foot on everybody's neck that's in churches. You know what I'm saying? Or that's in these big ass cathedrals or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like it's all perspective. Yeah. But on that note, we're gonna cut to this break and we're gonna slide back to y'all. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. So we back from the break, you know what I'm saying? So what we about to get into next is patience and divine timing. Divine. Yes, you know yes. what I'm saying? So how, so how do you feel about patience and divine timing? Um, throughout experience in life and practice and manifesting, patience and divine timing has been the two most important things that I keep in my focus. So what is divine timing to you? Divine timing is the time that things are meant slash supposed to happen opposed to the times that you would want or prefer them to happen. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Like you might want to... So it happens when it's supposed to happen. It happens when it's supposed to happen. You still take your preparation and your steps towards that situation, but... Yeah. You know what I mean? You might think, damn, yo, like, I mean, just a very common example. You might be talking to a chick and you're like, yo, I'm going to hit the night. You don't hit that yeah, night. You come in, you want me to hit next time. You don't hit that time. You're like, damn, then you start getting impatient. Now you're trying to force the hit. You ain't trying to rape nobody now, but you're trying to persuade the hit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? You're trying to be extra sexy. You're trying to coerce the hit. You know what I mean? You're not giving it that divine timing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where the patience also falls in. Because patience, man, that's I, what I've come to notice is that my emotions is patience's biggest opponent yeah <laughs> patience is a tough one I, like patience is a tough one i knew like i figured out how to slow down to a certain extent like before i went through my situation but it was like i knew going in i had to work on my patience you know what i'm saying like that's something i told myself so that shit was already gonna be huge you know what i'm saying so i knew that was a big one on my plate um, just because I was impatient with everything, short-term goals, long-term goals, like, I had no patience for none of it. Like, if I thought of it, I wanted it to happen right away. Period. I still have the same manifestation, like, energy, but it's way more organized now, you know what I'm saying? Because divine timing, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I may feel this way, you know what I'm saying? Like... I wanted at this time, you know what I'm saying? I want everything to fucking hurry up and take off at this time, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I feel like, but my feelings aren't facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, as much as I want my feelings to be facts, they aren't facts. They're just my feelings, you know what I'm saying? And you want to know, <laughs> you want to know what's crazy, bro? Like... <laughs> The thing that people don't realize and I have come to realize just recently in the past few weeks is that you're putting out an energy. You're the source of this energy and you're going towards this place. And then your feelings counteract the same energy that you're putting out. It literally stops the fucking energy. It's the same force. Yeah. Coming from the same source. Yeah. With counteracting commands. So now it's just null and void. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. And it, it's even like, I, I saw this cartoon, it was Rick and Morty, and it was just like, they, they got to the fifth dimension. And it was just like, everything's, you can see all of your possible outcomes in the fifth dimension. So what they would do, they was just like, just focus on going to get this one item. Just focus on going to get this one item. Because whenever you think about something else, you'll focus on what the outcome of that could have been. Yeah. Focus on what the outcome of that could have been. And yeah. you stop going to get that item. Yeah, and that made me think about the fifth dimension of which I dwell in. I'm like, damn, there we go. I'm yeah. counteracting myself everywhere by just yeah. feeling a certain way about certain shit that I'm working on in the process. Yeah. You know so, what I mean? So that's where it gets tricky because you don't want to like ignore your feelings because yeah. they aren't facts. They do lead a lot of our judgments, but <clears throat> that's when it comes with being in tune with yourself and knowing when to when your feelings should be in charge and when they shouldn't be in charge you know what i'm saying so if i want to uh, hurry up and get the god cast fucking worldwide you know what i'm saying like that would be something that i wouldn't take my feelings as facts it's like because i feel like i want that to happen right this second you know what i'm saying like it, that comes with time and I have to stay focused. I have to keep manifesting. I have to remember the little steps and the crumbs in between. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to be patient. Yes. Patient, you know what I'm saying? And then when you're dealing with the universe, there's no physical time. You know what I'm saying? You got, you, you don't, 
don't have the perspective of okay if I do this it'll be ready or it it should be at this time in two years or five years or seven years the universe don't have no time like that that's not how the universe time work you know what I'm saying because in your world you could be thinking yeah I'm gonna do this in five years and then you surprised when it happened in two you shouldn't be surprised you should be surprised that you was trusting this other time and not the universe time. And you also shouldn't be surprised when your shit ends in five years now. Yeah. Because you don't set that time stamp. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to be prepared to redo your shit in five years. You don't set it. You didn't leave it open-ended. You didn't give it time to grow to be what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's no different than a child. Cause it's almost like you race into a deadline or a finish line. You exactly. Know what I'm saying? Damn. I got five years, okay, damn, I got two more years to do this, damn. I said I was gonna get done this time, I got this my last year to do this, to get to this point, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like you trying to finish the race. You know what I'm saying? That's when you gotta work on your patience, you know what I'm saying? And then make your tasks smaller, you know what I'm saying? Set smaller goals, like we all like to feel rewarded. You know, you're not always gonna get it from your peers, but you can reward yourself. Whatever the fuck it is you like to do, you can figure out a way to reward yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you like taking bubble baths, <laughs> do something, then that's your reward for afterwards. You know what I'm saying? If you like to read, oh, don't read right now. You know, do, do what you got to do and then you pick your time to read. That's your reward. You know what I'm saying? But you got to have that set afterwards. And that's what helped me with my patience was just... Working on, you know what I'm saying, setting those little rewards for myself afterwards, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't realize that's what I was doing until, you know, you don't realize it till after it's already being done, until it's part yeah. of your routine. Like, the way the universe works, you don't, you don't know. It just happens. Exactly. <laughs> Especially, like, me, as a man, I'm not sure how all men operate, but I'm logical. So I'm assuming most of us operate like this. If I see a change that I want to make, and... I recognize it, that shit has changed immediately. It's yeah. just changed me. I might recognize it this day and be like, all right, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to do it. But it don't matter. As soon as I recognize it, I was like, all right, I made a plan to set that change into motion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just consistency. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is that's hard for you to do, you just have to make sure you compensate it with a better test. Don't just try to remove it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You have yeah. <clears throat> and it's tough. It's tough. But <clears throat> when you start believing in yourself more and, and following your flow, flow of the universe, flow of whatever it is that you know keeps you moving higher, you going to know that you on the right track, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to be worried about this physical timing for everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and even what you're saying, like, a lot of this is for, for the people who would like to consciously do it. Like, some people, yeah. even with me, when it came to taking in information, I had to lose all the information that I preferred to take in. I had to uh, lose interest in the people I used to be subscribed to, lose interest in their content. And then there's not much going on in the world unless you're making it happen right now. Yeah. So that's what got me to the place where I was just like, okay, let me work on myself every day now. Like, not just my emotions. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? Not just my mind, what I would like. <clears throat> nah, nah, nah. That make 110% sense. You know what I'm saying? For me, I have to shut shit off. There's no in-between. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when I was at that point, I had cut all cable out the way, all fucking sports shit out the way, you know what I'm saying? I removed all that shit. It wasn't, no, I'm going to pick a time to watch it or a time to do this, you know what I'm saying? Like, I removed all that shit, and I binged on what the fuck I wanted to watch, you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. What I wanted to intake, not just, oh, me stopping on the channel because this is the only option left. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how cable used to be. Just, okay, these are my channels. I got fucking seven, eight, maybe ten set channels that I might sh stroll through. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's usually less than that. But once you remove ESPN, ESPN2, BTMTV, 
That's four channels already. And that's not even including the rest of the networks that you might bump into. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And all of that shit is just mainstream. With it, it for me, it was to stay in touch with what society said was popular. What society thought was popular, what was the most profitable thing. Because I'm a businessman. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it was for me until I realized I set the trends. Yeah. Yeah, I set the tone. Yeah. In between moving around a lot, I'm used to starting over hard from scratch. So for me, that subconsciously, just shutting everything off at one time was kind of easy because that's how I'm used to kind of managing things already anyways when it's time for a change, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, my God, man. It's just shut it the fuck off. Like, who? change like I don't know how it happens but I know when I'm looking back talking and speaking on it that's you know that's what I take from it like I could say with patience because patience is divine time and go hand in hand if you got patience the divine timing comes I'm not gonna say easily but way much more easily yeah it does that's like if you always say a life is hard or this is hard that this is a way that you can live life easier yeah, man. If you want to know how to find the easy level, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is an easy level. And and with the patience and divine time, and the, I got more confirmation in it the more experience in life I had, the older I got. And I would want something, and then I'd just be like, all right, man. You know, people say, you know, be, be careful what you ask for, because once you get it, you might not want it. Yeah. And that's what I would see a lot. I'd be like, I would want something, then I'd be like, all right, man, I'm over this. And then it'll come couple months, a year or so, maybe a couple years later, and I'll just be like, I don't even want this shit no more. Like, why? you know what I'm saying? But that divine time and that patience, if I really, really wanted it, then I would have had what I wanted and I would have been happy. But at the same time, like, I wasn't patient for it. I really probably didn't want it. <laughs> so when the divine time it hit, it was just like, I ain't had the patience for it, so I really didn't want it and it didn't have no value to me. You know what I mean? But that's how I got more confirmation within those concepts. And I, I was like, okay, divine time, and let me start focusing my energy on things I do want. And keep my energy on things that I do want. No matter how long. I've been trying to, I've been trying, I've been working towards branding myself and my name and my music since I was 14 years old. I started rapping at 12. It's been almost 15 years. So I know when it does hit the level that it's supposed to, the longevity is already there. I was branding my spirit and started branding my name with Trek Beats. But through life, I was branding my branding spirit. yourself. Yeah. yeah. I was branding my spirit. Because it was nothing on paper. You know what I'm saying? I was just branding myself. I was moving around a lot. You know what I'm saying? And even when I got stable in a couple places, you know, it's it nothing really on paper. You know what I'm saying? I'm just branding myself spiritually until... 2015 you know what i'm saying and, and then i start branding the name along you know what i'm saying this is a great example and i'm glad that we're coming together because this is like a good visual representation of i branded my name he branded his person so like it's easier for him to reach out and touch people and people to be more receptive to touch back because you already know I, i'm not even familiar in that you know what yeah. i mean i know how to touch people sentimentally yeah and then their emotions not necessarily their person you know what i mean but the great thing about bro is he open and receptive to learn you know what i'm saying a lot of people are kind of closed off in that area and you gotta be willing to take it in from your peers from people younger from people older you know what i'm saying you know where that fucking knowledge gonna come from it's interesting you say that you the second person that said that within the last couple of months they was just like that's the thing about it was like the thing about you man is you always want to learn i was just like yeah yeah i agree but i thought everybody yeah, was yeah no <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody wanted to learn, at least what they wanted to learn. You get what yeah, I'm saying? Because in school, you was forced to learn one thing, but then it's like, okay, you mad that you gotta go to school and you don't wanna learn that shit, but what the fuck do you wanna learn? Yeah, you wanna learn you know, something. Yeah. You would think, you know. It's something in between there, but I guess in that space and time, too, you do get kind of caught up in the robotic motions of things and that's the great thing about him and i because i was going to say the same thing in a different way some people are just bodies they have knowledge of body to an extensive level but i'm not interested in 
just body or only body. Once you start raising your frequency, your patience and divine timing for dealing with bots and real beings. Oh my God. It varies greatly. Yes, it does. You're not trying to have no small talk. Because you lose a lot of patience with bots. You know what I'm saying? Or people who are not willing to learn or receptive to learning. Even if you're not trying to force nothing on them. If they're not learning shit outside of you. You know what I'm saying? Like People be thinking, oh, well, you ain't got to preach to me every time we talk. Well, nigga, come back with some information. So God, I don't have damn, to preach. It yeah. sounds like I'm preaching because you don't know shit. If yeah. you knew something, this wouldn't be preaching because it would be conversation bouncing back and forth. But since it's not... <laughs> now a nigga preaching Since it's not Let yeah. me tell you about the God cat. Yeah yeah What you got going on Now I gotta talk about myself You know what I'm saying That's how I have to stay away From some of them conversations Sometimes Because you I, I go into them spaces And you know When I, I Try to work on my patience In them areas It's like uh, I, There's no conversation To talk about I don't wanna talk about Other people we 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 aren't really allowed to talk about you because it's not really nothing going on to talk about because if it was you would be saying something or you, and I wouldn't be trying to dig. Or you aren't just comfortable being transparent. Either way, it's nothing to talk about. <laughs> if you're doing something, you would be very transparent if you're doing something productive and you living yeah. in that space because it's yeah. always there. You're always gonna talk about it. When I was constantly doing beats, and motherfuckers around gonna constantly hear these beats. You gonna hear these motherfucking beats. Yeah, and, I, and since there's been so much energy shifted over into the God cast, now you're going to hear about this motherfucking God cast. Bro took me somewhere, bitch was like, he was telling me, bitch probably ain't want to hear nothing about this shit. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you want to hear about it or not. I'm going to say it anyway. You can close your ears, plug your ears, shut your fucking face off. But I guarantee you, I'm going to put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch told me before I said it, she don't give a fuck. <laughs> and I still told you, bitch, hey, make sure you check out the God cast. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still going to counter what you're saying, whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a very patient person. <laughs> ah, I'll let you finish saying what you're saying. Like, ah, dig it a seed. Thank you. That's all I wanted to do. I wasn't going to fight with you. You didn't even have to respond. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, you have to. Um, and he grew up um, in New York, like a very assertive environment. Ooh. So, like, you have yeah. to assert yourself, even if you're not from New York. Like, that's something that I learned being around him more so, um, more often. You have to assert yourself, not only in sentiment, not only where it's placed to, where it need, where you need to be assertive. Yeah, because the day continued. I just had to drop it off. Yeah. You see, everything kept going normal. We got the footage, got everything still. The work was still done. You know what I'm saying? But I had, yeah. to, I had to drop it out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes I go to random places and I just drop my business cards off in random spots in their restaurants. I just tuck it or hide it somewhere. Somebody gonna see this shit grabbed. You gonna have to clean it up, move it or something. It don't fucking matter. You yeah. can throw the bitch away, but uh, it's already out there in the universe now. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But that also came with being patient because I used to be one of them people who just didn't want to put my shit out there like that. But now it's like, the universe is telling me to. Why am I going to fight it? Like, it don't, timing, even, man. don't even make sense. Like, And that's, the, that's also the thing about patience and divine timing, man. Like, for me, if I feel something and didn't think about it, it's not that time. Yeah. It's not that time. If yeah. I feel something, and I mean think about it in a sense where I'm, I'm, I'm dissecting the emotion. Now, if yeah. I feel it and be like, if you gotta oh, dissect I think I'm supposed it like to do a frog, it. Yeah. yeah, you gotta break through. Damn, why well, I feel like this? Do they mean this? Is it time? Something like this. Divine timing is when you feel it and you be like, oh, it's time to do this. Yeah, like you just know it's time. You don't even know why. You like it's time. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the <laughs> it's like the long race tracks. You know they got some like like on Need for Speed where you just get to ride through the city. It's not a circle, but then you got the NASCAR ones, which is the lap. Divine timing is more like need for speed, where it's just, 
you want one one minute you in the city, next minute you in the fucking desert, next yeah. minute you in the woods. Like, like a shortcut, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? But yeah. you feel actually in Need for Speed, the music in certain games the music changes when it gets to that. It does. And you don't always notice it, but you be like, yeah. so different. The music get more beat, you be like, fuck this shit. <laughs> Ooh shit. <Look> yeah. <laughs> it's time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you L- feel it. Literally. Literally. Gotta stay in tune, stay tapped in. But on that note, we're gonna cut to this break and we're gonna slide back to y'all. You, you, you. We back from the break, you know what I'm saying? You. So, our last subject we're gonna get into for the day is gonna be God, body, and universal knowledge. Mm. How you feel about that lifestyle? Man, so for me, um, my God body and my universal knowledge, I guess, not even I guess, I would equate it to my physical body and my mind. They go hand in hand. Before, they were two separate subjects, but I guess that's why I slashed it when I wrote them down, because it's like your God mind and your God body. So for me, when I was younger, I would envision things about myself. I was chubby. You know, grandma always feed you, make sure you're full, you know. Yeah. So I was chubby, you know what I mean? I always wanted to be in shape. My shoes was too small when I was younger. I had corns on my feet and shit like that, you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to I wanted to have a six pack. I wanted to not have corns on my feet. My, my teeth was all calcium built up, all like, you know, not how I wanted it. But I envisioned better for myself and I worked towards it. I've been going to the gym now for about eight years. I just started getting my body in order. I've been working out for like eight years. <laughs> the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? I'm like sitting up yeah. in that job. I done gave up a couple times and everything. Cause I'm like, how long a nigga gotta work out? I ain't that big. You know what I mean? I'm not getting bigger and I'm not really losing weight either. So is God like body your physical body? It becomes your physical body. It, it starts out as a concept. Cause when I was young, I didn't have anything like my everything that I that I was that like my that I wanted, it, including my mind. That's part of my God body too. Cause I was like, damn man, like I grew up in darkness. I don't want to be so conflicted. You know what I mean? Like yeah, everything from my manifesting to my balance to the clarity to the self awareness, the consciousness to how fit I am to the choices that I make for my body and my mind and my emotions, my spirit, man, like. It was all things that I didn't do back then, but I worked towards and I stayed on it. And that goes with patience and divine timing as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and it just got to the point where I got it. Of course, the body, that's just physical. Everybody can see the body. People want that a lot. But with the universal knowledge, it's just like I don't have to seek answers. If I have a question, I think of the question or the question pops into my spirit and I go about my way and the answers come to me in divine time. So God body would be focusing on the physical, the temple? The temple. Yeah. So does that, well, I guess we're going along with the temple. That means you also have to work on what you eat as well. What you eat and your mind is part of your body too. We separate it, but they work in conjunction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, the knowledge that you get comes from outside of it. I guess that's where, you know, those two, the universal knowledge, and that's where it connects. And, I mean, really, we was talking about these things. I'm connected. This is a this is a, an example of universal knowledge. We're talking about this, and it's yeah. falling into place as it's coming. Like yeah, My God body started innerly because I never, uh, my body was just already naturally fit already before. Oh I mean, I always ran and played sports and did all that shit already from young already, but my, the men in my family are already naturally. Genetically. Yeah, yeah, so when I started working out, it wasn't nothing to it, you know what I'm saying? It just, all it was doing was pumping everything out. Yeah, like, exactly. Nah, I used to know people like, like God damn, this nigga can eat whatever he want. You yeah. just stay with the pack. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I guess my God body would be when I started perfecting the inside and being more mindful of what I was eating, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. and being more mindful of the, the knowledge I was taking in, you know what I'm saying, so, oh my God. 
that's what kind of, and I wasn't in the mirror as much the physical mirror. You know what I'm saying? When I when I was younger, like I was telling you earlier, I used to be in the physical mirror a lot. I used to be in that shit a lot. Not the only time I really look at myself is when I'm having to re-put these back up. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I dropped episodes or I'm re-watching them and shit, you know what I'm saying? But like, since I started working on my God body from the inward out, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel more comfortable in myself, you know what I'm saying? So even my appearance on the outward, I feel better. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, that's that's part of going from that six seven range <laughs> to being that nine, boy, that's that God body coming out. You're like, yeah, I know what I look like in the physical. But you know what this whole package be like? <laughs> Come on, man. And we ain't even getting to the universal knowledge. Exactly. You know what I'm Come on, man. Following the motherfucking flow. Yeah. Like, following this shit. Like you you we do it at a young age and then, you know, yeah. we kind of like stray away and we kind of do it throughout life, but like being more aware of your 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 universal knowledge and following the flow. It it makes everything so much easier. You know what I'm saying? Like even your hardest levels will be easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll get easy breaks. Like, it won't just be yeah. hard consistently. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, like, oh, it just goes away. I'm just saying it becomes easier to think through, to manage with, to deal with, to handle your emotions and how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, and what I've come to realize is, because I was going to play back a, back a scenario in my head as you were talking, it happens anyway happens anyway like universal knowledge when you when something pop up and you're like damn I feel like I'm supposed to do this but I don't feel like doing this like yeah. I don't want to do this like that's the universal knowledge telling you hey this is what you're supposed to be doing you know it's, what I mean sometimes you want to do it and you know you're supposed to do it and you get a little timid yeah like, damn that was too easy am I supposed to yeah, exactly you be looking at like, that, that's, that's way too easy. yeah, yeah. What the, this is a setup <laughs> I'm scared now should I do it yeah. You know, yeah. like this is for you. Yeah, this man. Is, this is for you. Yeah, man. Like you ain't <laughs> lying. You ain't lying, bro. You ain't lying. Yo, when I met my lady, bro, for the first three, four months, like I thought she was from the government. I used to ask her off and on. <laughs> I used to test her. Like I just did, cause I'm just like, yo, ain't nobody really like this. Like I never ran into nobody who was genuinely the person, a female that I was. Uh, looking to be in in a relationship with yeah. that was genuinely the person that they portrayed to be from the beginning from the beginning it's, it gets scary that was scary as hell i was like who sent you bro like you're not yeah it was what's the catch <laughs> what's the catch yeah i was yo and then and then after a while i started to ask myself well, what do you what do you want from me what do you see in me because I had never been in an experience that was that was not exchanged. So how did the universal knowledge speak through you or her, like during or before that time? Well, I was working on myself before that, and I I wasn't I was single for about six seven months, and I was getting, I was comfortable. I like sleeping by myself now. I ain't even <laughs> body heat. You know what I mean? Stretch out. You know what I mean? Like I got comfortable, and then I ran into somebody in from the day we were we never separated from that day every single day every day the consistency consistency just consistency and she was working on her own stuff she got her own stuff going on so i'm just like do you think that because i know we had talked before about how you feel like you had to communicate with people all the time mm -hmm. do you feel like that played a big part in it too um, like, would it be a different outcome if you was in a different space? Not saying that it's supposed to, and that yeah, we're yeah, putting yeah. that out there, but I'm just saying, like, as far as if I was in a different space, I would say, I, I, though, if I would have treated like I typically treated everything back then, it was just I can only trust as much as I can see. But from what I can see, everything was genuine, so that's kind of what threw me off. Cause I wanted, I was treating it like every other situation, but it was just like this person is working as hard on themselves 
and for themselves as I do. Yeah. But making time for me. And I'm just like, what that's you want? That's the beauty. That's, that's building together. Yeah, man. Exactly. Building together. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? I don't usually run into people. I'm usually helping people fix themselves. Yeah, you she, know what I she mean? She's making you self-reflect. Yeah. Nah, she makes me better. She's a great person, man. Yeah. Like, I tell I everybody. I mean, you already self-reflect, but it, that, it sounds like that was like a big, another spark. I wasn't. You know, sometimes you got to spark that motherfucker a couple times. Like, <laughs> it may. You want to know what it is, and, and a lot of people don't realize this, especially coming from a low place, a dark place. At least me, I found people that I would like to be like, but it wasn't just external things. It was more so morals and principles. Yeah. So when I ran into that person, I'm just like, because I want to be a person like that. And I'm just like, anybody really like that. People look at me like that, and I'm not like that. And I'm the person that's most like that that I know. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, you ain't, damn, yo, like, you really like that. Oh, my God, like, I got to fix myself. <laughs> like, for real, like, damn, like, I thought I was, I'm usually the one that's the most ahead in my world, but I'm not no more. I love being challenged. Before, when I was on a different frequency, like, before I was really in my God body and followed universal flow, like, I, 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 I had a different lead on things as far as like females in that department, you know what I'm saying? Like the flow in the pick was different as far as how the flow in the pick would be as far as now. What was the flow in the pick back then more like? It was more exterior. Yeah. You know, so it was, yeah. I think it was, it was a lot exterior, but still, like, to a certain extent, like, I still self-reflected because it was, like, some of them would be in a better position than me, you know what I'm saying? So, but now me being in my God body and, and being where I'm at now, mm -hmm. it's like, you have to make me look at myself and want to be better. Even though I do that already, yeah. I should still get that feeling and vibe from you because of how you're working and growing yeah. within yourself. Yeah, man. It's no different than when you want to learn something, putting yourself in an environment where people are doing that thing. You know what I mean? You're just putting yourself around people who have those morals and principles that they live by that you would like to aspire to you know what I mean yeah yeah and you just gotta follow the universe flow you know what I'm saying yeah. that's, that's what we do over here you know what I'm saying like if you want to put a different noun or adjective on it you can but you know we call it the universe you know what I'm saying so follow the universe flow and it may sound easy because it's sentiment it sounds easy sometimes it's hard man like you know i didn't come up from a community-based upbringing so when i went to my lady's environment and it's so community-based like her family's there her mom's there all her sisters there like when i first went over there i couldn't be there for more than 10 or 15 minutes without crying because i just never had it i didn't believe it was this consistent and real because I just never experienced it. I saw it. Yeah, you was fighting the universe flow. It was, you was flowing. Emotionally, yeah. I couldn't. I, it, I, that was part of me. That's part of you. But even with universal knowledge, universal flow, it's not just going to be a flow. Yeah. That's an easy flow. Yeah. You know what I mean all yeah. the time. Sometimes them currents and them rapids hit fast and hard. Yes, indeed. But it's the right thing to do. You're on the right path. You know what I mean? It's just You got to hold on keep flowing don't jump out yeah 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 you felt like jumping out yeah man but in life i grew up in a way where you ain't no way to jump out where you I'm, you can't jump out strap down, ain't no way basically. to jump yeah, yeah. you strap down so <coughs> yeah I, I don't jump out <laughs> <laughs> i don't jump out i never had that option these god bodies though and that's the thing too i also had to realize man that's it's that's the, like when you build a relationships realize 
people grew up with the option to jump out. I didn't. I can't look at everybody like they should be jumping out all the time. They never had to. They still don't have to. Yeah. I only jumped out. I only wanted to jump out because it was something that made me want to jump out. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I only stayed in because it was something that forced me to stay in. Stay in. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. I would have jumped out back then if I was younger and had the option. Maybe I wouldn't have these trauma bonded responses. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, like, when I was at that time, I was jumping. I was jumping off cliffs. Bro. Yeah. I didn't give a fuck what it was. I was just jumping. I'm like, shit, ain't no telling when we about to move or slide or when something else gonna happen. Shit, I'm just about to jump, 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 jump. You know what I'm saying? Like, even going through school, like, even if I wanted to go to college then at the time, like, I didn't know how the fuck I was gonna get in there. My mom wasn't gonna help me or support me. You know what I'm saying? I tried to get into a fucking one of the, uh, the, the private schools. You know what I'm saying? She was supporting me behind that shit. So it was like my concept was so different back then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So everything was jump, jump, jump. You know what I'm saying? And I already had that. I already knew my physical body, but I wasn't with them, my God body. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, shit, me neither. I was not with them. <laughs> but when, when, when you got to sit down, you know, and you, know, you got to get your physical right. You know what I'm saying? That's part but of when your physical already right, then you you only got to work on the inner. So, and part of part of the reason why I started doing self uh, diving into self awareness besides for music is because you you know your limits um, as a person, and I didn't really see many for myself, and I was aware enough and conscious enough to see that, and I was just like. Even though you will do some certain things, you'd rather not. Yeah. And that's what I was building on when I was doing stuff like that. Cause I'm just like, damn, the way I feel, X, Y, Z. Yeah. I'll be down for anything, but I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. I'm done, done. Yeah, but I'm good. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. I ain't, I ain't about to do that one. Nah, I thought that was some other shit. Yeah. Nah, nah. Nah. But you said hell for anything, yeah, anything but that. Yeah, <laughs> the universal knowledge, <laughs> the way it's set up. Yeah. It's telling me not to fuck with Yeah, that. it's so. telling me not to fuck with that. <laughs> yeah, so you got to listen to yourself, you know what I'm saying? Everybody think that voice is something crazy. No, that's, if you think it's crazy, then you think yourself is crazy. Yeah. So don't think that yeah. voice is crazy. <laughs> that voice is you. It's matured with you your entire life, from the time you was a baby to wherever the fuck you at right now. You know what I'm saying? Shit is mind blowing. So yeah, man. Just understanding that that shit is you. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't look at that like it's something separate. And you wanna know what's crazy? It's your higher you talking to you. Yeah. I always imagine it as a voice. I don't even know if it's really a voice, yo. Like, know. it's just a signal more. So, like, I imagine it's a voice, but then when I try to pinpoint the voice in my head tone-wise, I'm like, I don't know the tone. Yeah. Because it's a higher self. We, we don't, we're not even there yet to really fully comprehend. But, I yeah. mean, we on the right path to comprehending, you know what I'm saying? Like, at least we are trying to ascend. We are ascending, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like... Yeah, you can't pin it. You're not going to put no face with it. You're not going to remember what it sounded like when yeah. you was little. You know what I'm saying? You only remember what you sounded like when you was <laughs> little. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. What sound like? What did that sound like when I was little? What that yeah. video at again? Yeah, let me see that video. Like, yeah, nah, yeah. I forget what that is sometimes. Oh, so. Fuck, I sounded like... <laughs> I just remember I used to have a high-pitched voice and I used to be like, damn, my shit is always high. Like, I don't know. And then I just realized, like, you know, I just I, my energy was just always there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, exactly. Cause I had a soft now tone. Now that I'm y'all about to say, then you was always yeah. soft tone. People used to be like, "What? What you say?" Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What you say? <laughs> right? I'd be like, "Yo." I turned into DMX after that. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It took a while. I don't know when when the transition happened. 
when the little bit of bass came in, but yeah, that shit was squeaky and high pitch for a long time. It's still pretty high, but it got a little bass on it now. I know. Yeah, I got my yeah, days yeah, where I got, I got my Barry like, White on. Yeah. Like, who your voice still be like? Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on my mood and who I'm talking to. Yeah. Uh, the, the universal yeah, knowledge got me in tune now, just, just following the flow. Yeah, just call me on my phone. You'll get my deep voice. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga, if I call you, you better not be talking no, like this. Yeah, we we'll start talking like this. If I call you, you put that motherfucking yeah. voice in. This is why we FaceTime each other. Hey, <laughs> man, all that soft tone. Hey, call me, man. Look at me. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Use the technology while you can, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because if shit happened like they did in Texas, ain't no telling what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So that's what, that's the importance of all of this shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Like that is the importance of all of this shit. That shit in Texas is crazy. Yeah. And yeah. what happened is they just lifted the band on everything. They don't even have mandate masks no more, and everything is back open. Trigger. Well, hold on. I'm trying. When did you? Where did you hear that? And when did you hear that? The governor announced it. I guess when I saw it. it oh, was for the state. Yeah, Texas is wide open. Oh, that state. Yeah. Okay, okay. I thought you Not meant nationally. No, no, no. Just Texas. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, they lifted the ban, so. It's interesting. They can do that shit anywhere, so you have to start being within your God body. You know what I'm saying? And start and taking that universal knowledge and paying attention to the signs, the numbers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, different yeah, words, yeah. pictures, videos, like tones, all that. Tones, language. different songs that just pop on or that just you just happen to play first. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, pay attention to all the signs because this is how shit get communicated to us. So, don't just be like, oh, I didn't knew I was in this mood. Yeah, it probably did. So, what else do you read within? Because it's never just a picture book. You know what I'm saying? There's usually some kind of in-depth novel, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, for most of them. You know what I'm saying? But it's been another dope episode. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna wrap this thing up. Y'all definitely make sure y'all stay in tune with the motherfucking God Cash. Y'all tap in the Vinegar Hill. You know what I'm saying? And do some research. You know mm. what I'm saying? That was another Black Wall Street. Mm, 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 mm. That doesn't get discussed much, you know what I'm saying? But definitely, definitely, definitely stay in tune with them and make sure y'all check out our IG. Y'all hit that motherfucking like, yes, comment, sir. subscribe, you know what I'm saying? Ding, ding. We're gonna be adding a lot more content, you know what I'm saying? We got Chino Blizzy in the building hey, with nah. us as always, you know what I'm saying? I'm your boy Track Beats and we signing out. <laughs>